very warm welcome to all of our listeners here at Radio Maria. This is yet another episode of Encounter. Bit of a change this week. This episode was a little bit longer than usual, so we're going to split it up into two. The first part will be this episode that you're currently watching right now, and the second part will be out next week. So, um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the episode. How many countries do you think you've been to in total? Um, I would say 26 or 7 countries and in yeah, total in total Try your whole life yeah did you do like did you do most of your traveling when you were younger or like most of it was done after you left high school um i was really blessed when i was in i went to boarding school in rockwell college in okay. tipperary for two years um shout out to all my rockwell homies if you're <laughs> listening to this um and i was blessed enough to go over to they have an exchange program with a, a school in new zealand okay so when i was 17 i moved there okay for about a year okay so it was the earliest travel. I came back when I was 19, but it wasn't that much of a culture shock because okay. we have so much more in common. In common, yeah. Um, what was the biggest, what was like the first time you, you realized that there was like a massive difference? Massive culture shock? Well, I suppose I came back from New Zealand and studied photography for a year, then went to university quickly after that. And then blessed again by God, thank you so much for the experience. Went to the Middle East, to Abu mm. Dhabi. but We were in a, like an oil compound you know, 280 kilometers away from the city. Yeah, yeah. And um, that I think was, I was very comfortable. I mean, it's all good, you know, with me, but it was a, a culture shock. I was like, why aren't there any pictures of Jesus around yeah, here? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> and um, it was great learning and I met some great people. And then Amazing, from there, bro. yeah, I moved over to South America then. Yeah, from yeah. Obviously you've had like, you've had a, you've had a crazy experience, a crazy ride up until now. Yeah, it's been a yeah. real, a real wonderful Amazing. Yeah, like, I, I can't wait to dive into it, man. Yeah. But welcome on the show, first of all. Thank off. you, Deanne. Yeah, it's great to, to have you on. Nice one. Um, yeah, would you be able to tell us, about, tell us a bit about yourself, just for, for the listeners? Yeah, well, outside of what I've shared already, where I went to school, um, a lot of my travel was done through secondary teaching in the Middle East and then quickly over to South America, mm-hmm. where I got very involved with humanitarian work and... I was running a children's charity there and set up a few programs for single mothers and, and kids living on the landfill sites. We built some houses and medical treatment and things like that. Amazing, man. Um, still going on, those projects, praise God. And then I set up like an expedition company over there, um, bringing people up into Machu Picchu and up into the Andes and wow. then into the Amazon jungle where we had a healing center. Wow. <clears throat> it was a big, big journey. And then I was over and back between there and the Middle East. Right, okay, okay. And I was involved in Nepal for a couple of years with okay. um, yeah, another program we had going on there. So, Where did this desire to travel and <laughs> see the world come from? Where did... I mean, the desire... It's a funny one. Yeah, I don't know if it was ever on my plate. It was just like, it, as I said, it was just God. Just, yeah, yeah. this is an opportunity. There wasn't even sure. a thought put into it. It was like, yeah, this yeah. Is just saying yes to everything. Yeah, yeah. And in South America, I always wanted to learn Spanish. Okay. And I kind of, in the back of my mind, okay. the initial Middle East visit was to pay for that trip, you know. Okay, okay. And then, sure, what do they say? If you want to make God laugh, you tell him your plans. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just an open page, open book know. for a while. And that's amazing. Yeah, that was good. And she so ended up in South America. And then, in terms of, like, your faith background, how did your faith play into all this? Um, you know, I've been really blessed. Um, my mother's really faithful, and she's, ah, oh, she's such a rock. She's a saint. I mean, every, everybody says that about their yeah, mother, well. don't they? <laughs> But um, yeah, she, she, we were always really, we prayed a lot together when I was a child. Um, mm. I had some really lovely experiences with Jesus um, in my teenage years. Um, yeah, I just, I had a really, I had a real love. I still do. I had a real, just a really deep love for him as a, as a teenager and in my 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, I wound up in Medjugorje actually when I was about 19 or 20. And that was a real beautiful experience. Cool. I was actually there for Youth Week, uh, 2006. That's like the Youth Festival. The youth youth Festival, okay, yeah. Great, and that was total just by coincidence. I read Anne Catherine Emmerich's book, um, okay. The Sorrowful Passion of Jesus. And then like three days later, I was in Medjugorje. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was, there was like no resistance to yeah, the thought yeah, yeah, and the yeah. action, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like thinking about it and arriving was one movement. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then that, it was always there in my life in the background. And even when I went to South America to run the charity, I was part of the Medjugorje prayer group in Cork where Finbar O'Leary, mm-hmm. um, he passed away in 2019, but he's uh, he was well known out in Medjugorje. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the prayer group, <clears throat> I told them I was going to 
run the children's charity in this very, 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 very specific part of a very, very big, I suppose, shanty town. Okay. Nine hours north of Lima. And uh, Finbar said, oh, that's where all the Irish missions went out there from Cork. Mm -hmm. So, and then when I got there, Everybody was like, ah, Father Brendan. I was like, no, no, I'm just Brendan. <laughs> just because I was Irish, you know, every yeah, Irish person yeah, yeah, must yeah. be a priest. And, you know, the, there was a real, it was, Jesus was always in the background yeah, all the time, okay. all the time. Wow. And um, sometimes he lets you go down the road a little bit to come back to him as well, you know. For sure, man. Um, yeah, so, and then it's just, as time went on, Jesus, I suppose, has revealed himself more through experience and through the people I was around and... Yeah. <clears throat> things I was allowed to to experience with him and amazing yeah it's ever Great. growing yeah the relationship is something that I, I wish I'd harnessed into a much younger okay. in my early 20s Great. and let that be my my compass you know mm -hmm. um, I, I, I guess I actually took for granted really my own awareness and relationship with Jesus thinking everybody had the same thing mm. and it, it saddens me that that wasn't the case I just assumed it was yeah you know but yeah Amazing. Hey, we're gonna make up for last time and grow and know. <laughs> could you could you speak a bit more to like some of the, the some of the things that you did when you were in South America? Um yeah. so yeah, whether it be with the charity or even some some things you didn't mention yet. Yeah. Um this the charity work was really great. Um oh god, Jesus was moving there as well. He was really stuck in. There's a lot of beautiful experiences. Right. You know? Who were you working with, like primarily just kids and Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> kids and and a lot of their parents, a lot of single parents there okay. as well. Okay. And I had volunteers coming in from sort of everywhere for about 12 months. Amazing. And we had programs and education and women's empowerment stuff and all that, you know. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so did that for a while. Set up the expedition business and that was really great. A way to meet people as well. Like lots of people from different parts of the world came mm -hmm. along. Mm -hmm. And then actually... We built a healing center into in the Amazon, uh, some friends of mine, and I went into. I got involved with, I guess, like a, with shamanism, and it's like a now there's so much of it going on. <clears throat> you know, in Ireland today, shamanism is like the fastest growing belief system or religion. But I went into it sort of unknowingly that I was doing something not that Jesus really yeah. wasn't okay with, and he actually. Like he really saved me from it. It was a really profound experience, a, a couple of times actually. Mm -hmm. That he he was very like, you need to leave now, get out of here. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I watched Father Brendan Walsh give a talk um, up in Mayo, mm. I think in November, and he spoke about witches and how they can make things turn invisible and <clears throat> and this type of stuff and. I was like, oh, you live with those people and, and I've, I've watched them do it, you know. Man. And I, in my naivety, I was like, I did not know we were allowed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't know we could do this. Yeah. And just uh, incredible. Now, there's great healings got there because there are such great herbalists in the jungle. You know, For I sure, spent, yeah. I spent man. time with yeah. two specific tribes. One were called the Shipibo mm -hmm. and another tribe were called the the Matt says and they were just discovered in 1972 before that they were nomadic you know but they were really 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 great people great wisdom with plants and which ones to heal you and this and For sure. I, mean, <clears throat> I mean those plants they speak to them you know they're in touch with their spirits and they hear their music it's almost like Pocahontas or Avatar yeah. you know so it's very captivating for people <laughs> to go For sure. Over. And find their source of heat, source of healing that way What was that experience like staying with those with those tribes because like <clears throat> yeah like from from the outside looking at it, from what I've heard about sort of indigenous tribes and especially in the Amazon, like mm. they they seem like tribes that you probably shouldn't go near. Yeah. Um, but like, what what was your sort of initial reaction to? Yeah, well, to seeing some of them, they loved me. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy, this guy's cool. Guy speaking Spanish, bringing people around, and just having good fun. But um, it, it was a real experience. In I guess it's almost become an industry now. Right. In people looking for their healing that way, oh, um, yeah. And I suppose one of the tribes, what they they give you is this like this psychedelic medicine, okay. And it's um, called ayahuasca, and you drink it and you hallucinate um, for four or five hours in the dark, in the middle of the night, in the jungle, in this little hut, mm. and they're singing over you, and <clears throat> you go into these spiritual worlds, and they're in there, and you're you're fixing things, and you're puking, and you're bring it's restoration, and it's an incredible experience. Um, and you end up, how do I put this, Dion? I guess 
it's an incredible experience. Outside of that, mm. their knowledge of the plant kingdom is, is second to none. They're herbalists, okay. essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you start getting involved in that type of stuff, um, essentially what it is, is is the occult, you know? It's it's hidden knowledge. And it's it's we're not supposed to get involved with that. Yeah. And a lot of them are Catholic. And the reason I, they're, like, they're Catholic by, because of the Spanish going over. Mm-hmm. You know? And the reason I stayed there for as long as I did is I'd actually found a, sh- a shaman lady who was very, she, reading the Bible all the time, you know, talked out about Jesus. Yeah. And I thought, well, if people are going to come over, I might as well bring them to somebody who, who's safe and who knows the truth. For sure. But in the end of it all, it's, <clears throat> it's, um, it's not something people really should do. Mm. And uh, there was at one stage, I was in, I suppose, a bit of spiritual hot water mm-hmm. um, at another place, at a different centre to this lady. But there was a woman there and her family and they were doing some fairly serious witchcraft on me. Okay. And I knew something was going on. And I don't know how to describe this, but there was a really powerful moment where my whole body was just tingling. I couldn't really move and I was just stuck. And the the lady came over to me. It was really dark now. Mm. And she walked on, she left, and she was sort of in a huff. And she was talking to her family in the other side of the room. Anyway, uh, she came back at the end of it all and she said, uh, do you know what happened? And I said, I just don't think I should be here. And she said that there was a crucifix there on fire and Jesus came into the room and surrounded you with this light. And I'm not, you have to, basically you have to go because he, he was protecting me from what they were doing. And um, so there was that, that's there all the time, you know, and it's, it's like people have, there's such a, a misunderstanding of what that, what people don't need to go down that road. Yeah. You know, Jesus is, he is a, he's the king of all those realms. He's the king of, he's the king of the, all those invisible places and the, the spiritual world as well. That is, and, um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Was, that, was that the moment then you kind of, you realize that this is not something I should be doing? I wish it was, but no, I hung out there for a while longer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, not obviously there at that place, but <clears throat> um I was still very involved in the country for a while after that because okay. of the charity and the groups and things. Yeah. But I pulled away um, not long afterwards. Okay. And um, yeah, it's just... Yeah, it was a real eye-opener Yeah, uh, that, that moment. And there was a lot of God since then, from that moment onwards. I mean, Jesus really was revealing himself in, in so many ways. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Towards just there's no need for any of this like, what for you sure. so you're, like you're taking the long way around but it was just total naivety on my part yeah yeah, yeah. and um, I guess that would be a message to a lot of people who are sort of people are running to that mm. you know as mm-hmm. a way of healing themselves and yeah giving the healing to a particular tree or for sure. plants and, and take, take it ignoring the creator yeah 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 I suppose, and we were mentioning this, we kind of spoke about this um, when we first met, it was as well, like, it's a very easy way to fix things. It's a very, like, on the on the, outster, on the outside, when you're looking at it, it's like, all I have to go is, all I have to do is go and receive this healing. Yeah. Um, and then I'll be healed. And it doesn't really necessarily demand anything from me. There you go. Whereas a life of Christ is quite demanding. That's and it. And turns people off quite often. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what's like, what 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 is what are some of the biggest signs? Because new new age is something that I think is is taking off, and you you'll speak to this very well. Like it's taking off. Yeah, like, it is. Like it's one of the most dangerous things that that is facing our faith at the moment. Yeah. Um, what are some of like the biggest indicators of um, yeah new age uh, in today's world, and like how do people identify those and like and then stay away from them? Uh, yeah. because I feel like it's so ingrained into modern society now that like people are just doing it without realizing what they're actually what they're doing is 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 just so wrong and so against our faith yeah that's a really spot it's a really great question and I, I really hope whoever hears this I suppose the radio station has and uh, has got its own niche type of a niche crowd but if anybody yeah. has family members or friends that might be involved in new age um, <coughs> I suppose first of all the occult, even though I did not, if, I, if I'd heard that word back then, I would never have gone near. I didn't even understand, you know. Mm. The occult is hidden knowledge. Hidden knowledge is, I suppose, what the devil gave Eve when he handed her the apple. 
Mm-hmm. So take that. You'll know a bit more than the lads, you know? Yeah. And I suppose when people look at life through a biblical lens and through the lens of Christianity is the only time they will have all of the answers. And the only conspiracy real, the only thing, I suppose, conspiracy theory that there is globally mm-hmm. in the media, in the new age, in everything is to separate us from Christ. That's the only objective, the eternity of, the eternal realities of our existence are Christ versus the Antichrist. It's, it's, yeah. That's the battle, you know. And with the new age, I mean, it's so, Jesus told us at the end of, in these days, you know, don't be afraid of weapons or don't be, be afraid of deception. Mm-hmm. Eve was deceived. And deception, new age, there's nothing new about new age. It's as old as Gnosticism. You go into the earliest heresies in the first century in the church. You know, there's, there are, it's just resurfaced and repackaged in a different way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time that these things become mainstream and widespread, again, after, once, after having been quenched, is because of a global distance from God. Yeah. It, gains, it regains spiritual territory yeah. in the realms and it plays out here on the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, witchcraft, for example, a lot of, I mean, I, I posted a video, for example, um, the, the, the largest witchcraft conference in the world was on in London in November. <clears throat> and I shared a video through Instagram of these witches walking around London for two weeks beforehand, dressed in black and dressed in red, faces painted, carrying candles and doing all this stuff. And they were co- like they were covering ground, preparing for the conference satanically. Okay. And that's the same reason Jesus sent his people ahead of him. You know, he sent the 70, he sent, he sent to go ahead before me. It's, I shared this anyway, and mm-hmm. a relative of mine got in touch. And in the post I had said, you know, Christians, we need to be praying against this stuff. And only then did I understand that a lot of people, or women, I guess, involved in new age is new age ism um they think witchcraft is this empowerment of feminism it's it's a thing that was hidden from them as women but most of the people doing it are dudes yeah <laughs> but, but it's sold that way yeah. you know and the deception is so and when jesus said the path was narrow oh boy did he mean it mm. he did there is absolutely nothing you know there's nothing he won't do for us mm-hmm. But we are sort of determined to do it our way. Like yeah. that Frank Sinatra song, My Way, not the <laughs> devil loves it. <laughs> but, you know, it's, um, it's, this, it's this kind of towards self-righteousness. I can do this myself. I don't need... It's edging God out all of the time. Yeah. Um, we, the, 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 the plants will heal me. I mean, I mean herbal medicine is great. Mm-hmm. But what I was talking about earlier is a bit more than that. But, yeah. you know, this um, like Reiki and, and it's the origins of things and it's this kind of self-righteousness and this this uh we're all gods is basically the yeah, the right. theme of new ageism you know god is in us and we are gods and i am god and you are god and just to be very very careful of that yeah you know, is if you're if you're getting into it because um it's a deception yeah it's a deception god made us a little less than the angels and that is enough reason for us to walk around with so much dignity and honor and respect and love and care and compassion yeah that we don't need to like basically what what it is actually now that I'm speaking is it is it is a repetition of the same sin as Lucifer in heaven. Mm. He wanted to be over exalted in the position he was given. Sure. Yeah. The devil was given this beautiful or Lucifer was given this beautiful place <coughs> in heaven, and he wanted to be exalted as a god. Mm-hmm. And us here on the earth are being told, "Yeah, hey, you're a god yourself, don't you know?" Yeah. And yeah. people are embracing that. Yeah. And they all think they're gods until they get a 400 euro surprise dental bill in the campaign, you know, or they get the flu and, you know, yeah. but there's a lack of humility. And uh, I think the sooner people kind of maybe embrace the Bible and <clears throat> yeah, and just take, take a sit back and say, you were created by God who loves you, you know. For sure, man. Um, and I think a lot of like when Christ was on the cross and they said the curtain was torn from top to bottom, I really believe that was a tear in our consciousness, in our psyche. You know, and there was no going back from that tear. And I think people who go back into paganism and druid, mm. and druidic ways, that's, they're going the wrong way. <laughs> you know, the curtain sure. was torn. Yeah. This is the way now. Yeah. So since that moment in time, everything was null and void. There was no, there was no need for it. Yeah, because yeah. Christ conquered that dominion. For sure. If that makes sense. For does sure, that, yeah. That answer your question? Yeah. Sort of? yeah it, it, it does, it does, very, it does. But uh, what, what are some, I suppose, the, like the hidden ways that people like, 
that they wouldn't they look at something and be like that's clearly good I can't see how oh, there's possibly yeah. any new, new age <clears throat> in that I get caught with that all the time yeah. still because I'm still oh that really but uh, I mean the hidden it is um, yeah when he said the path was narrow but, but if people really could just have a fraction of an insight into how much of the world the devil owns yeah. and is in control of obviously the media pharmaceutical company every big thing you know mm. um, but you know even those evil eyes you know those blue evil eyes yeah. definitely, they're, yeah. they're full demonic you know yeah. and people might say why is that I couldn't get into it but like Reiki the origins of Reiki you cannot separate you cannot separate the origins of the origins of something from the practice of it cool. it doesn't matter in distance in kilometers mm-hmm. or in your intentions mm-hmm. the origins are the origins um, you would say the same for um, yoga you know mm. people say, people say it's just yoga but if you look at the origins of it this is what it is and uh-huh. yeah there's it, it would nearly really need to have your radar switched on all of the time when you're buying things and what's behind it I mean do you remember those and I'm not even talking about going into new ageism right now, but like deception of, I remember those LOL dolls, you know those LOLs? Yeah. Have out loud? yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that big thing that happened? I was it an Australian teacher uncovered it and then they were banned all over the Middle East and they were banned everywhere. Like these, the LOL dolls, you'd put them in water right? and it would reveal all these like satanic pentagrams and they would be in chains. Right, okay. But the LOL, when you investigate it, was actually uh, Lucifer, our Lord. And wow. there were a big recall of everything, but that is how he gets into people's homes. Wow. So it's it's the, you know, I remember Padre Pio. I'd like to say personally, but no, the when he was in the church, mm-hmm. he prayed and he prayed, and an angel appeared unto him, and a beautiful angel man, mm-hmm. like wings and bells and whistles and you know <clears throat> everything, yeah, light and clouds and trumpets, uh-huh. and he said to Padre Pio, you know, you don't have to. You can stop praying now. You've done. You've done. You've done good. Mm-hmm. And Padre Pio, as as it says in the Bible, to test your spirits. If they're there in the name of Jesus, they will say so. Mm-hmm. And this angel couldn't repeat that and burst into flames and flew out through the ceiling. But it was okay. a demon. Yeah. Now it's just to give people an insight into the deception. Mm-hmm. Everyone, all the a big part of New Age thing are like talking to my angels and talking and you know all this stuff. Yeah. But nobody is checking, and it's uh, it's we are in a p- perpetual spiritual warfare, and the battle is going on whether you're aware or or not. You know, yeah, man. You're, we're in it, and not to sound doom and gloom, but people, sh- I would really love from just my experience to yeah. share that it's it's whether you like it or not, you're in it for sure, and yeah. not to turn your back on the Creator. You know, <clears throat> yeah, on God, He loves you. Like. Yeah, mm. for just, people, for people that have, <clears throat> I suppose, already taken a step into. New Age mm. um, and have kind of been indulging in it for a period of time now yeah what 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 would you say to them um, um, how what is like the best approach to yeah to just like to liberate yeah. themselves liberate. from from like liberate is a good word actually to yeah. <laughs> liberate is liberation yeah break those chains um, God sometimes it's wonder, I wonder what I would uh, what I would say to them would also be, I suppose, I'd like to nearly share share a testimony about some people that have come out the other side of that. But liberate was a good word because quite often people do need prayer to break yeah. the chains that have been put on them spiritually. And because of that, um, yeah, I, I lived for a long time in, in South, South Africa uh, with Fernanda and we did uh, this lady I've got something here picture to show you shortly but she's a mm-hmm. wonderful ministry there she's been a messenger for for Christ since 1994 okay. and in her house we were doing a lot of deliverance prayer and and learning and, and healing and praying it was just fantastic mm-hmm. um, yeah and there was one guy there his name was uh, M. Bo he was a South African guy Great. And he came up to the house. So there was the prayer house and there was um, a men's house, which is for like a lot of guys who struggled with crystal meth addiction and and gang being in gangs and things like that. Okay. And Impo came up for an interview to be allowed into the house. Mm -hmm. So we interviewed him and he went up to the men's house and 
I followed him up. And one day I saw this big scar on his arm. And I said, that's the most gnarliest scar I've ever seen in my life. So he went on. I said, what happened? He told me the story of what happened. Um, it was such an amazing story that I actually like gave him all my clothes and we had an interview proper. I said, tell me that one more time. <laughs> I'm going to record you. Like, Anyway, some guy tried to cut his arm off with a machete and they were on drugs and he woke up in the hospital and whatever. Oh my goodness. But I mean, the details are brilliant, but there's no need for that here. Yeah. But he was in, he was very involved with you know, a lot of new age stuff and very involved with the Sangomas, which are also like the mm. witches of mm-hmm. South Africa, you know. Um, big, uh, Crystal Mate was a big problem of his addiction. And he was lying in bed in the hospital when he woke up and the guy beside him was like, oh no, he's awake. Yeah. He had no recollection of going to the hospital anyway. Yeah. But um, over the course of a few days, he'd been there for a month and a half. Um, he said he saw all of his family members that had been involved in the with the Sangomas, like right. the, the witch doctors and things, right. and they got turned into pillars of ash and they got blown away. And then in the room, he was just engulfed in this panoramic everywhere mm-hmm. battle scene <clears throat> between two eternal warring kingdoms yeah. of heaven and hell. And yeah. he said it was just the most incredible. There were angels and there were white horses and spears and demons and fire and fighting and it was going on forever and he knew his soul was in there and that they were fighting for it mm-hmm. you know and this was going on for this is the reality for every single person on the earth that yeah, God loves yeah. us so much yeah and the devil is trying his best to get you mm-hmm. to like deceive you and to the legalities you know for sure and to yeah. get you in there and he basically just t- plugged himself out of the hospital and, and came straight up to the, the prayer house wow. and gave himself to Jesus um so I guess, you know, there's that reality of that's kind of, so I know it's obviously we, I, want, I would love everybody to come to God out of love, yeah. <laughs> of course, you know, and he loves us so much, but sometimes some stories like that are quite good to let people know that's a reality as well. And fe- not, not that you want fear as a motivator, but yeah, after investigating that fear, you understand why you're so loved. For sure. Um, yeah, so like, there was a lot of that. I mean, in that time up there, there were so many <clears throat> people had come for for prayer and deliverance because of like a lot of new age stuff they weren't they didn't know they were involved in mm-hmm. um, yeah like simple stuff anything you know like simple stuff it, the path is really that narrow when you think that Jesus said mm-hmm. you ask anything in my name and I will do it for you yeah you know yeah, right. and us trying to do it ourselves it's like an insult to God yeah and I don't maybe because we've there's been so much time between the crucifixion and now but people have become disassociated with the with the reality of the promise yeah yeah and, you know, we as Christians, we should really be the happiest people in the world mm. because of the promise that's before us. Yeah. You know, like, oh, my goodness, what have we been promised? And we know it's true from experience. Look at Padre Pio and the stories I'm telling you. Yeah. You know, it's the truth. There's no other faith in the world yeah, that should be as happy as we are. Yeah. There, there will never be peace in the Middle East until they have Jesus accepted yeah. as their Lord. And, <clears throat> and but that in that in that truth, mm which you and I know about, and I'm sure most of the listeners know about. You take a step back and you look at how we have been disempowered and distracted from that truth and the authority that it has given us, you know, and the responsibility yeah. to, to move forward and to share that. Yeah. And we've been, like, um, distracted, you know, with all the glitter and the bright lights. And, yeah. Hey, check this Reiki out over here. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, this yeah. this, oh, don't, you don't need Jesus. Yeah. But it's funny, like if I was telling somebody about, hey, come here, come to South America, I'll bring you to my healing center, they will be throwing money at me. I'll be making yeah. Benjamins all day. <laughs> but then you start talking to them about Jesus and there's this resistance. Yeah. And it's like, what part of you, mentally or spiritually, is in bondage to resisting a ministry of pure love? Yeah. You know, of pure, unconditional love and promises and yeah. heaven. Yeah. And what's it, but you talk about Buddha, you know, and they run to that. And that's also not good. That's very bad as well, you know, obviously. Yeah. So we've we just have so much in our plate, and we've been and the devil is really trying to make sure we don't access that. Yeah. I think so. That was episode one of two with Brendan. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the episode, do give it a like, do subscribe, do share it around with your friends and family. And um, it is a very cool topic that was discussed. So, um, and a topic that, as we mentioned, isn't that, um, is a topic that people just aren't really aware of. So do share it around. And if you would like to get in contact with us to give us feedback to 
If you have any questions for Brendan, uh, you can get in contact with us by calling us on 014-123456. You can give us a text on 089-467-2000 or you can send us an email at radiomaria at info at radiomaria.ie. So do get in contact with us. And like I mentioned, episode two will be out next week. So uh, do stay tuned for that as well. God bless.